All right, so in this equation, I have x to the power of 4 plus x squared is equal to 20. So to solve this, what I'm going to do is first start by subtracting 20 on both sides so we can have all our terms on one side. So I get x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 20 is equal to 0. Now this may seem like a quadratic equation, but it's not because we have the power of 4 as our primary term, and then that's led by the power of 2. And in a normal quadratic equation, we have 2 as our primary, then we just have 1, and then we have some constant c. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we can't use the, we can't factor this out by using the quadratic formula because this is not a quadratic equation. So to solve this, what I want to do is rewrite this as x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 16 plus 4. So I rewrote, rewrote 20 as 16 plus 4. And the reason I did this is because negative 16 is the same thing as negative 2 to the power of 4. And negative 4 is the same thing as negative 2 squared. So now notice how I have something in the power of 4 and something in the power of 2. And they're both the same. Now I can put the powers of 4s together and the powers of 2 together. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and 16 is the same thing as 4 squared as well. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 4 squared, and I have this plus x squared minus 2 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 is the same thing as x to the power of 2 times 2, which is equal to x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 4 to the power of 2 plus x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now notice how everything is in the power of 2. Mm -hmm. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to use this property on these two groups. So I first get x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we can use this property again on x squared minus 4 by rewriting as x squared minus 2 squared. So that's going to equal x plus 2 times x minus 2. And I have this plus x plus 2 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor out x minus 2, so I get x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 plus x plus 2, which is equal to 0. And notice how we can also factor out x plus 2 as well. So actually at the start, what we could have done is just factored x squared minus 4 out. But now we're going to factor out x squared x plus 2 as well. So I get x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. So x plus 2 times x minus 2, like I said, was x squared minus 4. And I have this times x squared plus 4 plus 1, which is x squared plus 5. Now this is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I get x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And I get x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. So for x squared minus 4 equals 0, I can add 4 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 4. And this is equal to positive or negative 2. And for x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. I get x squared is equal to negative 5. And I get x is equal to positive negative square root of negative 5, 
which is equal to positive or negative square root of 5i. Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 80. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 80 as 8 times 10. So we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 8 times 10. Now, notice how we have two 8s on both sides. And what I want to do is I want to move this 8 to our left-hand side. And the only way to do that is to divide both sides by 8. So if I divide both sides by 8, I get 8 to the power of x divided by 8 is equal to, these two cancel out, so I'm simply left with 10. Now, this 8 here is the same thing as 8 to the power of 1, right? And now, if we have something in the form a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So a to the power of x divided by a to the power of 1, we can think of a as 8 here, x as m, and 1 as n. So if we plug this in, we get 8 to the power of x minus 1. This is equal to 10. Now, 8 here, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, right? So I'm going to rewrite 8 to the power of x minus 1 as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1. This is equal to 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, oops, sorry, n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1. This is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 times x minus 1 is so equal to 10. Now we have to simplify this, so we're going to distribute the 3. So this would be 2 to the power of 3 times x is 3x minus 3 times 1 is 3. Now this is equal to 10. So now we have 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to 10. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10. Now, an important property of logarithms is that, let's say, we have something in the form log a to the power of b, right? Well, we can actually move our exponent b here to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. And this is an important property. Because let's say we have some 2 to the power of x is equal to 5, right? A simple exponential equation. Well, we can just take the log on both sides. So we can move this exponent x to down. Because we wouldn't want, we can't solve this exp equation if x is an exponent. We want it to be a real term. So that is why this property is so important. So in this case, as you can see, x in this case is an exponent. It's not an actual term. And if we want to find the value of x, we want x to be an actual term. So I'm going to use this property here and move our exponent here, 3x minus 3, to the bottom. So now we will have 3x minus 3 times log 2 is equal to log 10. 
Now, because we want to find our value for x, we're going to have to isolate it. So we can do that by first dividing both sides by log 2 to move our log 2 to our right-hand side. So then these two cancel out, and I'll be left with 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10 over log 2. Now, the value of log 2, this is equal to 0 0.301. And log 10, this is the same thing as 1, because any logarithm always has a base of 10. So this is the same thing as log base 10 of 10, and this is essentially asking 10 to the power of x is equal to 10. So what is x? And x is equal to 1, right? So log 10 is equal to 1. So now we have 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over, now log 2, that is equal to 0 0.301. So we have 1 over 3.0, 0 0.301, sorry. So 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over 0 0.301. Now, 1 over 0 0.301, this is equal to approximately 3.3223. So now we have 3x minus 3 is equal to 3.3223. So I can simply add 3 on both sides. So now I have 3x is equal to 3 plus 3.3223 is equal to 6 point, sorry, 3.223. Now I can divide both sides by 3 because we want to isolate x. These two would cancel out. And I would be left with x is equal to 6.3223 divided by 3 is equal to approximately 2.1074. So x is equal to 2.1074. And now, remember our original equation was a to the power of x is equal to 8. So if I plug in 2.104 into my calculator, so let's 2.8 a to the power of 2.104, let me plug that into my calculator. So 8 to the power of 2.104, and yep, it is indeed approximately equal to 80 because it's not the exact value of 80, but it is approximately equal to 80 because they 